Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials Video 62. It's on the force time graph, which is what it sounds like. It's a graph that shows the force applied and how long that force is applied. And as an example, I'll use the Saturn V rocket, which delivered the Apollo uh, astronauts to the moon. And so it's a three-stage rocket. And so stage one is the largest. It's 34 million newtons of force and it's applied for 165 seconds. That'll drop off, and then you have stage two, which is over four million newtons of force, but it's longer, it's 360 seconds. And then finally you have stage three, which is a million newtons of force, and it'll, it'll fire twice. The first one to get this escape velocity, and the second one to put it on a trajectory so it can intersect with the moon. And so if we were to draw a force time graph of that first stage, it would look like this. So we're applying a 34 million newton force and it's for 160 some seconds. And so this would be the force time graph. And so the area underneath that graph is equal to the impulse, which we use J to represent that. It's the force applied and how long it's applied. Now as we've learned in earlier videos, that's equivalent to the change in momentum or mass times the change in velocity. And so if you can get the force time graph, you can figure out what the change in momentum is and you can figure out the change in velocity. Um, now the second stage, the force time graph would look like this. It's about four million newtons, but it's longer. And since it's longer, we're applying a force for a greater amount of time, so we're going to have a greater change in momentum uh, just because we're applying it for a greater period of time. And so the change in linear momentum is equal to mass times the change in velocity. But it's also equal to the impulse, which is force times time. And these two values are equivalent. They're equivalent in units. Uh, change in momentum is kilogram meters per second and force time is going to be newton seconds, but they're equivalent. We can move between the two. Once we have one, we can figure out the other. And they're also equivalent in their direction. So that change in linear momentum is equal to that force, which is going to be a vector times the time. And so if you have a force time graph like this, simply graph the force over time and then inside that or underneath that graph is going to give you the change in momentum. And so again to go back over what impulse is, if we take force equals mass times acceleration, remember Newton's second law, we can say acceleration is simply the change in velocity over time. If we multiply both sides times time, then we have the two things we're talking about. On the, on the right side we have change in momentum and on the left side we have impulse. And these are equivalent, they're exactly the same. And so if we're looking at impulse, we use J to represent that and it's simply force times time. That impulse, which is gonna be a vector, is equal to the force, which is a vector in the time that it's being applied for. And so let me give you an example of how you might use this force, force time graph. And so a real example from the Saturn V rocket, if you apply a 34 million Newton force, to a 3.0 million kilogram rocket, that's how much the Saturn V weighed, for 165 seconds, calculate the change in velocity. And so this will be the formula that we're gonna use right up here. So we'll plug in everything that we know. So force times time equals mass times change in velocity. Our force is gonna be 34 million newtons, that's right here, times the time, 165 seconds. That's equal to the mass of the rocket, which is three million kilograms times the change in velocity. And so now we just have that one value change in velocity. So we can multiply everything on the left side, divide by everything on the right side. And so we get a change in velocity of around 1900 meters per second. So there's gonna be a huge change in velocity. Now, when I look this up and looked at the, what NASA released as the amount of uh, change in velocity during that time, they have a value that's greater, so 2,700 meters per second. And so where's the difference there? Well, remember, as that rocket is firing, it's using up some of that rocket fuel. What's that doing to the mass? The mass is changing. It's getting lighter and lighter and lighter. So what's happening to our change in velocity? It's getting greater. Now, in AP Physics, they will only ask you questions where the mass is going to remain constant. Another way they could ask you that question is to give you the force time graph and then have you calculate the change in momentum. So let me give you an example of one. Let's say this is the change in force over the change in time and you need to calculate the momentum change. All you're gonna do, remember, is calculate the area underneath that curve. That's gonna be the impulse. And so we could break it down into geometric shapes. And so the first one I see is gonna be this rectangle right here. It's a 30 Newton force on this side times 30 seconds. And so that's gonna be 900 Newton seconds. It's just base times height. Um, I also see a triangle on the left and on the right side. So again, geometrically, that's one half times base times height. And so that's 30 Newtons times 20 seconds. And again, we have to take that in a half. 
And so that's going to be 300 newton seconds, and then the other side is going to be 300 newton seconds as well. And so we can just break that up into its different shapes, then we add them up. So we're going to have an impulse of 1500 newton seconds. Now another question they could ask you is similar to the question we just had about the rocket. So now we have a change in momentum of 1500 kilogram meters per second. Could you calculate the change in velocity if I give you the mass of the rocket to be a half a kilogram? Well, try that, and I'll put the answer in the video description down below. And so did you learn to apply mathematical routines to calculate impulse, which again is force times time? And, and do you know that that's equivalent to the change in momentum? And finally, could you perform data analysis on a graph of the force time graph to figure out not only the impulse, but the change in momentum? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.